Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Trash Can League. We are in round number seven. It is Snooper taking on Passy. Game number one will be played on Siberia. And we see Snooper spawning to the southeast of the map in the colour yellow, playing as the British civilization. With Passy playing as the Dutch spawning to the northwest of the map. Um, a good map for both civs. I'm, I do like... But both civs have good features on this map. Uh, Dutch, they really appreciate the defensive tower in base. Allows them to kind of go about their own Dutch booming bank building business without getting too disrupted by enemy civs. Uh, the British player here will be liking all the hunts. But I'm just noticing there's only one hunt in the southwest corner. Uh, first hunt in base. Second with third and fourth uh, to the right position where... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Passy's map is uh, certainly a little bit more futuritous in that sense. You've got one second hunt here, third, uh, fourth, with extra fifth and sixth on the map. Uh, I, this is the worst spawn of Siberia I have seen on Defensive Edition for a long time. I think this might be Snooper's like, uh, fifth hunt, where it's even closer to Passy's town centre. That is incredible. Hoping that some of these hunts will uh, walk back towards Snooper's town centre as the game progresses and... I'm seeing Snooper here going for a trading post, looking to go for a Virginia Company build, it looks like. So maybe the limited amount of hunts here for Snooper may be a bit of a cause for concern as the game goes on. Look at treasures so far. Snooper, 40 wood pass. He picked up 50 coin, very nice, and 30 coin. So he's certainly got a lot, lot of coin income behind this. Checking with Passy's micro, and he's going for the 14 vil age up here. No, realising that with all this coin... He only needs to manage 24 coins, so he's going to have a very quick age up here. He's not going to be idle too much on the age up here. And the 84 coin is actually very nice. That means that when you build your bank, you don't actually need any villagers on coin in transition to get your first villager. So it's actually a nice smooth um, kind of macro in that sense. Uh, he sees his 80 food treasure. I think he's trying to find a wood. Um, kind of a bit of do double scouting here from the envoy. Uh, I'm not really too sure what pass he's trying to draw here in the minimap. It seems to be a bit of a... A bit of an interesting shape. Maybe it's in proportion to himself as well. Um, no further comments on that one. <laughs> Having said that though, there's no reason a Dutch player should have this limited amount of scouting. Um, Dutch and Envoy, they should work in tandem, kind of kind of like two and two. So the Dutch so the Dutch not so the Envoy comes on the outer side, the Explorer comes on the inner side, they're both kind of double scouts, and the, the um, Explorer can move across and scout other the explorer can easily move across to see what the envoy is scouted. Uh, what I certainly don't like is when players um, have the explorer this side of the map and their envoy is faffing around down here in the uh, far east side of the map on the other side because any information that the envoy gets at that moment in time is kind of useless because it doesn't really help the explorer. The explorer is not going to leave his part of the map and cross the entire side of the map to um, deal with whatever treasures found over there. The only advantage is if the envoy that says over here scouts the British Explorer, that allows Passy here to be very committal to the treasure, don't have to uh, risk too much and um, yeah, take it. But uh, look, not too bad actually, um, a bit of a chopping food here, waiting for that wood treasure, but just have the wood, bank rates go down and yeah, it's just going to have five people, five villas building the bank. I see if he's trying to do some sort of bank wall, maybe market houses across the front, but I think some people um, over overvalue a tight wall on the front side especially for your first bank i think first bank is very important just to throw that down asap minimize time and get that xp in fast and get that coin income as fast to get your villager and um yeah passes age one here looking absolutely fine um of course we're coming down here this is interesting though because he's gonna go for the classic um stable stable house market opening here maybe actually yeah i think with an early stable here you can get away with stable house market don't necessarily need double houses here and um yeah gonna go aggressive here with the bank wagon so at least passy's got this correct instead of sending the bank wagon here instead of 700 wood if you're opening stable from the 400 but um i don't know i feel from the 400 wood age up on a 14 bill i think you have time to go standard build uh, bank wagon on 400 and send 700 wood afterwards but this batch of hussars will get into the british base super super early and actually snooper does scout the stable he has scouted the stable right yes he does scout the stable he scouts the 14 vil age up he should know dutch agent before four minutes usually signifies 14 vil it doesn't necessarily mean aggressive play style but just you know agent up with tempo 
Brax gets thrown down pretty fast. I think it's like two veils on that, maybe three. And I know you've actually pikes coming in, which is nice to see. Passing here again, a bit of tight macro here, but just get another villain queue. Uh, a full batch of Hussar this early in the game is actually a really good effort, so um, certainly props uh, for that production there. Is Herden in another Musk Deer? Probably now, actually. I don't think another Hussar should be in queue. I think this would be a good opportunity to basically pull everybody off. You've probably got enough coin left over the villain queue and just focus on the eco and maybe age up. The four Hussars should be enough to be a really annoying, cause a lot of idle time, uh, run the pikes around, and. Um, yeah, this might even be an early kill, but uh, Snooper this early in the game, guessing his great coats, he's he's certainly aware of how best to play against Cav, Pike and great coats. Uh, Vill's coming here, one villager looking to go down at the moment. Other villagers uh, stopping there, a bit unfortunate, maybe trying to bait the Hussars for the Pike win catch, but um, you know, losing one Vill to Dutch play going four Huss isn't a big deal in the grand scheme of things. There you go, there's third bank coming down. Passy does have uh, a considerable amount of wood remain, probably about 450, uh, 400. So it's going to be market and possibly fourth bank to try and kind of get to that same level of investment. Uh, yeah, I think if he goes market, he may need to buy uh, some woods to get to that level. So he could go market, uh, buy a batch to get the wood for bank number four. And hunting dog, we're sending 600 woods here, actually. Um, with, this, with this kind of like... Um, Macro is always tempting to, to suggest a 700 food play, but it looks like he's going to go another batch of Huss, another batch of Huss, send 600 wood, try and get your rest of the infrastructure in a normal way with the 600 wood, with an age at the same time, maybe a bit delayed because you've gone for the less eco build, but oh, there's a big pike batch, there's pike sandwich here, or should I say Hussar sandwich served by pike bread, and yes, Vil goes down, but uh, two Huss will go down as well in terms of HP as well, that's a nice catch, I'm surprised Pass was able to get out of there, so uh, certainly Passy. Uh, covering himself in very slippery oil and getting through a tight squeeze. Pike's giving chase though. Uh, villager tempting the Hussars to their death, but they get out of the way. Uh, Passy trying to take down a 75 uh, food treasure, so it's quite significant. Another batch of four Huss looking for a bit of split micro here. And these Pikes, th there's enough Pikes, but these Pikes in a bit of an interesting position. But there's a scout in here from Snoopy. You should see it's a mile away, but another Ville here looking to be going down. Passy actually doing this very, very, very um, well play. Yeah, I think I think five banks versus British. I think it's fine. I, I think if I personally, I don't like this player style with the Brits going for versus Dutch. I think age two Musk Huss is just so tough for Dutch to deal with. I think Bo Pike age two so tough for Dutch to deal with. Um, Bo Huss is also. Basically, anything age two, Dutch starts to kind of go, hang on a minute, I haven't actually got a good answer to this. Um, it, age three as well, it's, 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 it's balanced, but as the game goes late age three, the infantry upgrades really start to dominate, and veteran skirmishers upgraded just demolish longbows at range, and that's kind of where the, kind of the game starts to tilt back into the Dutch player's favour. Uh, a coin being sent for Snooper behind here, so it looks like he's gone 700 wood. Five deals, 700 coin, probably going to age up a bit of tempo here. At 200 um, mana pop as well. Is it a full sh mana pop? Yes, 20 um, houses already. That's pretty good. Passy here, sending in 700 food, researching steel traps only now. Yeah, look at this coin. He's, um, he's kind of forced to kind of finish these batches of Hussar scums, but he still needs to basically pull off all of these uh, bills. He's gone for a yeah, full bank, a full bank. Yeah, we, he needs to gather this this food. I think he, I think he will with all his bills. That'd be a good decision there, and uh, he should be able to age up a little bit later. But the herding, uh, and we'd, we said that Passy had a great um, spawn with all these extra hunts, but some um, the letting a little bit of that herding go away. But you can anticipate he spent a lot of APM here focusing on the raiding and riding with his cavalry. Nine hussars still on the field, but all the pikes they're just sitting on they're sitting on the patches of hunt. There's five pike here. There's a tower here. Town center in the middle. Five pike on this hunt. And there's some pikes by the explorer, which probably should move, but actually, nice little position on the side, um, kind of causing issues for these Hussars. Yeah, Hussars can go in. Another vill might go down, but the pikes nearby, possibly trying to pick up a Hussar. Losing a vill here is not, yeah, not ideal. Counter raid down to the southern side, but um, Snooper split up his pikes and raid to receive them. That's a trade which the Huss can easily win. They can win that fight. It's not, a, it's not a positive trade, but um, 
uh, if you can raid all these and idle all these vills, it may actually be worth it. Uh, a batch of Lombo has been produced there from Snooper. I'm hoping that's in transition. Yes, he's, he's making units now in transition. That's absolutely fine. And um, oh, 40, 44 vills here from Snooper versus Passy, 27 plus uh, 4 bank. I'm going to have to give the slightest, slightest advantage here to Brit's position in general. Um, but I think with Dutch, if they go 1,000 uh, woods, I think they'd be absolutely fine. What's happening here, Passy? saying lol. I hope he hasn't forgotten something. Um, don't know, but these hussars are going right through. And actually, they're engaging on the pikemen instead of the villagers, so that's a big, big oopsie there. And that's um, going to be three hus, four hus, maybe the fifth hus somewhere gone down. This hussar batch has to run. There's actually a batch of five hus here from Snooper as well, so you've managed to get some good uh, production there from the stable. The age up complete with a... Um, that wasn't a longbow shipment, was it? No, he's just trained a batch of longbows around past town centre. And um, yeah, the game lagging, that's that's unfortunate though. I was, I was, that probably explains why the Huss went through the pikes and just kind of got picked off there relatively for free. And um, the customary rest in peace. But uh, this is a tournament game and uh, hardware lag and malfunctions is uh, got to be uh, taken into consideration. Now I'm messing, it just sucks completely. Um, yeah, no, not ideal, but I... Even before all that has been lost there, I still I still was enjoying Snooper's position there, especially with the pikes and later on the the, the, the hussars, the ten hussars coming out. I'm not too sure they would have those extra hussars in the Dutch army would contribute too much. A thousand wood does come in, so this is be a good time for them to go for bank number five. Get that XP going, ready for your next shipment in the first age. So pass it here. Five routers. Oh, look at his food count as well. So all this wood being gathered, that should be ready for. Um, bank 5, going art early artillery foundry. Um, interesting decision. I'm not going to say it's uh, right or wrong. It certainly. I think an early artillery foundry, you kind of... Oh, you lost connection completely. No, you're still in the game. Was it you just... Oh, yeah, it's just that brief kind of like lag spike. It's just trying to reconnect. Oh, I get it. Yeah, it makes sense. Um... Yeah, going to early artillery foundry here suggests to me that Passy's already given up the Skirmore versus British longbows, which at this moment in time, yes, there's certainly more longbows than our skirmishers, but once your infantry attacks do come in combat infantry attack, you do start to win this trade versus the longbows, but um, I can understand going for three Falk, pure um, Reuters behind. And that, yeah, the losing the 15 second may explain the... Uh, slightly high food macro as well, but it's okay though because once you send the wood, just get it spent, get the houses thrown down here, and um. Oh, that's a fifth bank. I was about to say otherwise, your your um wood then hasn't really gone far, has it? It's only managed to get like a artillery foundry, two houses, two falks, and your wood's pretty much already gone as it is. Snooper starting to push out here. There's a big army here, and look at this. There's five units, types, longbows, hus, falconets, dragoons with pike support. The pike and here, just nice side, um, nice side units, pretty cheap, but they do some good damage on top of dragoons, and that's what Pass has to do with. Oh, he's moving his, he's moving his falcons very far forward. I don't like players who march their falcons in the range of falconets. The Snooper could have picked off at least two falcons there from Passy there, but a bit delayed, and actually Passy win that trade uh, three to zero. But Pike Hus going straight in, and Pikes do big damage versus anything they touch. Hit them the Hussars as well, uh, picking off that um, all of the Falconets, and it's just Reuter behind. Hus can peel off and raid some villas behind, or, must, or can try and keep the snare for the Pikemen to do damage. There's Minutemen, big batch of uh, Skirms coming around. The Skirmishers weren't in the fight for the main fight there, off to the side. But um, yeah, that, that fight, even though towards the end all the Pikes and a couple of Hus got cleaned up, that's absolutely fine there for, for Snooper. Um, I mean, it was a good recovery considering he lost his two Falks basically for free. He's following us up with 10 Longbows, now into 1,000 coin. Is he going to artillery foundry himself? He is. Where is it? Uh, where is it? Where is it? I haven't... Oh, there it is. Looks like I got the find all artillery foundries instead of go to artillery foundry there, so I couldn't jump to it. But, um, yeah, Snooper going for Falconets himself, which... I'd have to say here, you'd probably want Culverins because you know your longbow mass is going to demolish his skirms and beat his Reuters down. 
And the only way you lose your longbows is if you go pure falconets. If you go culverins here, you, you dominate the artillery war. If you go falconets, you have to micro and win the falconet war or trade for you to stay in the game. Otherwise, if you lose all this for free, you might be in big trouble. Four falconets on us. Massive longbows. Nice dodge there by Snoop. Again, in and out. We'll pick off one falconet. He doesn't quite actually get up there and loses three dragoons. So falconets also already proven to be a good investment. Hussars raiding villas. Passy with Hussars there to defend, but Snooper is aware of the map presence and the hunting that's going on. He doesn't actually see the uh, hunt down to this side where the villagers are progressing afterwards, but he doesn't know that um, coins being gathered up. Uh, Reuters is not pulling the Falconets across, and um, I know that Passy is a player who wants to really push himself further, but uh, you need to be dragging these Falconets only for speed. Why you want to push with tempo? You've got your seven speed Reuters. Pull tricks there to be used to drag them across the map. Nice volley there. Six numbers going down. Hussars moving forward, but are going to get pulled back in the meantime. Snooper defensive. Two fouls. He sent that 1k coin shipment, but he hasn't really got much showing for it as well. He's, he has invested into a big batch of Dragoons, and this is what I was talking about. Two Falconets is, you know, usually it's actually quite strong. But. In the face of four Falconets, or let's say three in a tiny bit, it's not really what you want. So Snooper is now forced to go into two Colv as well, just to protect the two Falcons. And Passy here could also just go Colv himself and be fine. And looking at his macro right now, Passy seems to be coming back into this game. Hello? Minutemen alive in the back line, taking the population. May want to delete that, to be honest. Uh, the house coming down. Second stable, so double stable. Reuter production seems to be the key. Or, or maybe Hussar Reuter mixed. I, I think five Hussar, five Reuter concurrent batches is probably the safest way to get your macro being spent uh, completely. Eight skirmish shipment is absolutely uh, lovely here. But, you know, you could make the argument of cavalry combat here. Or, um, yeah, you probably want cavalry combat. A thousand food, you need a bit more housing space to make good use of that, especially if you've gone coal van, you know, lots of population. Oh, uh, is it, uh, well? Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know about that change. I, I think the Huss there was a bit of an interesting play, actually. The thing is now, you're, you're, you're literally double downing on your artillery to win the war. You do have two culverins there, so you should, you, you should be able, in theory, to win versus, you know, two Falc, two culverin. There's a lot of longbows here, very long siege, and a very long attack range. So they could actually play a part in taking this down. And the Reuters, the, the thing with Reuters as well is that, yes, you know, the 10 units are 10 pop, but it's, we've got so many resources and so much production, it feels like actually you just can't spend through all those resources fast enough. I suppose you're spending quite a bit of that food in the skirmishes more, Reuters, and then you've got enough coin there for another Falconet as well behind. Hassar just scouted around looking for Vils. What a nice play this is. Actually revive, goes to revive the Explorer, but actually finds Vils in the process and may actually force the engagement here on the right side. Big uh, push on the left side as well. I'm not too sure Vils went down here. That coin mine's gone. Those coin mines probably went over to this silver mine. There's a couple of silver mines top side for him to play on to, and these Vils down here just hunting on their own. But yeah, bank going down, Vils going down over here, but you have to favour the bank trade here. Extra XP as well for the British player, and um, yeah, 35 Vils, 52 for Snooper. So Passy probably edging ahead here on the eco just a little bit here, with the four banks advantage. But another bank here about to come down, it's a couple of Falconets helping, and yeah, Passy's retreating. Good decision there. Siege and houses isn't going to do anything, but if you lose your banks, you're in big trouble, and you cannot uh, lose that as the game goes on. Uh, Snooper here with his cavalry combat. Uh, number two Falconets here for Passy. Scouted out by Snooper. Uh, Snooper here's quite a few Isles coin mine here. Looking to move on to this another coin mine. His food situation is basically out already. Just that's the map being annoying. He's actually on Passy's side of the map. That's quite unfortunate. But a bank, third bank going down. A second bank going down. Third bank at risk. This Falconet's a bit dangerously exposed. Uh, Dragoons and Hussars come across. Everything's being pulled across here. And... Uh, yeah, losing losing the two Falks then, not problem. But if you can take the bank down with the remaining Falks, he, uh, it's, that's, that's all right. It really is all right. I think it's, as soon as that third bank goes down, three banks is fine, but two banks as Dutch is really poor. My God, look at these artillery. Um, 
Snooper's got to be careful here to not be, feel pressured into taking the fight. But he sees an opening. Hussar's going straight in onto the artillery at the back line. Royce is not really responding or moving to position. They actually stay holding position and focusing down the Dragoons. But um, I hope it's not another disconnect because I feel that uh, the Reuter moving there feels most natural. But then again, this could be a pass. He hands off the keyboard and just lets uh, Mother Nature take its course. Culverin's uh, coming out. They do focus on one um, Falconet. There's one Falconet 2 HP still alive though. And... Um, oh... Snooper targeted the wrong way. We need to target the high HP one. But I suppose this didn't receive any damage actually. Okay, all Falconets going down. Longbows standing their ground behind this. Snooper, more Hussars coming out, more Longbows. Reinforcements here. Not looking that big, to be honest. But um, with no infantry combat here, this is a fight I think uh, Snooper's absolutely fine to take. Passy here, sending in seven Skirm, five Skirmisher, one Falconet being trained behind this. He's going for he's going for the Reuter Bash, but this is, this is possibly where you try and go for the. Uh, Hussar batch and just try and get this GG moment incoming. Uh, Reuters behind will uh, pick up these five Hussars. This is just a miss rally point here from Snooper. He's going to try and get them out. But um, yeah, it might lose two Hussar here, but no real big deal. That bank survives though, which is actually going to be quite crucial in this situation. Villagers are moving over to the side of the map, looking for hunting opportunities. There are some Hussars on the map. Haven't seen too much raiding from either player, really. There are nine uh, Reuters down here. I'm hoping that's not the nine Reuters shipment there from the Dutch player. And it looks like um, Reuters and Skirms are moving to the left side to pick up these um, villagers, which uh, Patsy scouted. But um, Snooper's not opting to join them. He's kind of just sitting back here, maybe trying to find his own... taking on his own Reuters or do his own raid on the northern side. And... Um, yeah, Snooper's hunting and mining situation is now getting very, very dire. Looking to be very unlucky with the map spawn here. Double Hus coming in from Passy. That Hus behind us does have his Cav Combat. So at least he's got his Cav Combat in. So when they do come out, they should be pretty strong units. Snooper with the Cav HP. You know, buffing both the Dragoons and that. But his mass isn't actually looking that scary. 134 pop there for Passy. A Snooper only at 112. Most of his economy as well, to be honest. The military population is like half the size here for uh, Snooper compared to the Dutch player. Longbows should get a decent pick here, but hopefully, the, the, unfortunately, they're, they're, I think they're just attacking one at a time, so that wasn't, wasn't the most efficient way of getting those kills. Large mass of um, skirmishers here looking to be a bit risky. Oh, well, well, I mean, when I say risky, I mean scary for um, Snooper to deal with, and did see a big batch of husks coming in. He's only on the one racks, isn't he? Yeah, one racks, one artillery foundry, two stable. So uh, it's quite hard for him to mass his longbows. And it's the longbow play I think he really needs to mass on and, and kind of double down on instead of like the cavalry. A couple of dragoons here will be very nice. He's going for a batch of dragoons, but in total it's 15 husks. Oh, big rabies. Raiding eight hussars. Rookie. Um... Yeah, in this situation, you are really only want to peel three, three, two hussars, something like that. Um, it will get the raid, but he's got to be, he's got to be thinking right. Go in, get the raid, come home, not push out for a further raid. And there's hussars going to defend. I mean, maybe they'll defend now. A lot of hills going down in this coin mine. That's been absolutely brutal. Therefore, uh, Snooper trying to just get some extra resources. This is the file coin mine that he has access to. So all the players are centre around the silver mine. And um, yeah, Snooper going to quickly return. Does see the five Hassans there from the secondary stable. Yes. Hassans going on that back line, but uh, enough defensive Hassans here from Snooper. They're not attacking. Nice, maybe a, a delayed Z move there. Um, could try, could try easy military drag, but actually the right click comes in from Passy. Snoopers the size out of position, and the Reuters just come in and basically clean house. What a smart attack here for Passy, knowing that all these Hussars, and even get the snare off these Hussars to halt them getting back in, and the entire standing army there from the British player just instantaneously wiped from the field at that moment in time. Infantry combat's come back in for Passy, so these actually scums are very, very scary uh, units. Still trying their best to tank, but that's just a great time in and Passy picks up game number one. I feel a bit sorry for um, Snooper with that map spawn really. I think um, 
Snoop was forced into some different decisions than he would normally go to based on the available map, the resources he had access to, where Passy, with a very strong map, not as much walking time, obviously Banks continuously gathering, and I think that fight near um, Red's base, I, I was maybe expecting a little bit more from the Culverins to work onto the... Um, oh, let's just get that noise away. I was expecting maybe for a little bit more in the sense of those culverins to work through those falconets a bit better. And that first fight with Snooper pushing in this way, early age three, losing those two falconets by just, just yeah, not not noticing the three falcons from Passy come in and actually, you know, Passy actually sent those falconets in range of Snooper's falcons, unpacked in front of him, and then fired. Especially as all those three falcons were together grouped, Snooper was um a little bit more cognizant on what was happening there. That could have easily picked off two Falks because they're touching each other, and that would have changed the game because the resulting cleanup there from Snooper was actually was actually pretty decent. So that fight could have gone so so much stronger there in for to the um, British players' favour, and you can kind of see that early exchange. There. He's just although you know passes down military population, most of his Reuter Falk. So the Falks come off. Um, wait, is this the Falks? Yeah, it must be the Falks. Where's so far's off. Falks from Snooper Gun, maybe reinforcements. Um, yeah, but it, it was it was Snooper who lost his Falks first, maybe. I I don't know. Um, but essentially, yeah, Snooper got a decent after losing his Falcon. It's got a decent trade in past his base. Um, that big fight though, pre even populations, but um. If you've got the same military population of Passy's units compared to Snoopers, remember most of these are one pop rotors, which are you know pretty stronger than what they represent. The artillery did well, but the eco behind it was better for the Dutch player at this moment in time, it was less our time, more natural resources in the map, and Snoopers' natural income was starting to run low at that, that point. I think we can see just the nat the res just starting to peter off there for the Brit player, and his the strongest resource income was possibly around the kind of the, the 15 minute mark, I think. Yeah, a strong, a strong VC boom there, and the early four Hus probably di didn't quite do what needed. Passy agent up there, ten minutes and ten seconds with about fifteen Hassans trained. I just think after this early game, it just points to the British players' uh, favour, and I think Snooper carried that. But uh, losing his Falks in that first fight really didn't help that position. But uh, as the game goes much longer into the fortress age, it starts to tilt towards uh, British player and. Towards the Dutch player, and that's what kind of happened. Losing those vills by the outpost was a kind of a killer blow. Even though it's just eight vills, it's just Dutch player definitely ahead of Eco at the moment. And the military, that final fight, smart play there. Smart play, baiting the Hussars up and slamming in the remain remainder. Right, GG, we'll move on to game number two. Snooper Passy, game number two. Let's um, do it. Let's quickly check the Discord. Oh, exciting times. I've just been delivered the new ESOC key. Uh, beautiful. And it uh, looks like uh, recorded games have been set up for both the um, EPL and ECL, possibly just along the. Just for the um, what is it? The player managers. I guess that's cool. That's good decisions. <laughs> right, cool. Let, let's uh, crack on for the next game. Just need to clear my um, notifications. I don't really don't even really want to disturb it before the next game. Okay, so number two. Let's do it. Game number two. We're on the Great Plains. Passy here, winning the previous game on Siberia as the Dutch civilization. Going to be playing as the Germans now on Great Plains. This is Snooper's home map. Uh, so Snooper's chosen to play here on Great Plains. Pat is quite happy with this though. He's a bit of a German player himself, and because uh, he won the last game, he gets a pick first. So yeah, Passy here playing on Great Plains as the Germans. Snooper though counterpicking here with the Incan civilization. 
This is Inca pre public preview patch. So they have six fills, three hundred. Is that 300 um, food, 300 woods? It looks, kind of looks like the same start, to be honest. Um, I think the new start for Inca was turned down a little bit to 300 food, 400 wood, a one llama, instead of 300 food, 400 wood, 100 coin, three llamas, which is a bit ridiculous. So maybe, maybe they were testing something and just forgot to change it back. Maybe like a, maybe like um, Inter left it as like a smackdown patch and... Everyone starts off a factory wagon and that kind of fun stuff and then forgot to revert the changes. Uh, 30 coin there by Snoop. Um, still looking possibly to go for the age one. Uh, what is it? It's the Queen's Festival for the four villagers. Gimmick, though, how he's been playing the Inca recently, does like getting the age up in queue first and then going for the Queen's Festival in transition. 70 XP by two coyotes. It's it's not worth to... It's, 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 it's certainly worth there to take. You might as well might as well take it. I'm just struggling to think of what what other treasure he thinks he's going to come across instead. There's a thirty coin, and he's actually going to go and uh, grab that one. And the thing is, coyotes are so quick and easy to kill. But it's just it's probably worth just stopping off and picking up that treasure. That shipment wouldn't come in much much further. Okay, seen the uh, eighty wood from two grizzly bears after the bandit rider being converted. I think that's what he's looking for. I'm going to move in. Might want the bandit rider to tank. I'm not quite sure how he wants to go about this. So he's going to attack with this Ink Explorer. Try and move back, get him to get him a bit of a splash. He's going to make, go for that, the uh, spear attack. There's a special attack coming in. But it's, a, it's not an area effect, though. So it doesn't actually need... Is it an area effect? I don't actually know. No, it is an area effect. So maybe, I think it's hoping for a bit of... Then be a bit more together to get these damage off. But uh, the Ink Explorer here taking a lot of damage to take this uh, treasure. Just imagine if Snooper was an African explorer. Just get the, get the two grizzly bears to fight each other. Job done. Yeah, you can explore his one of the weaker side of the tre of the war chiefs and the explorers in terms of relative strength. And uh, it's paid a lot just to get that treasure down. Eleven villagers here, sending in three hundred wood quite fast. This seems to be a bit of an aggressive play here from Snooper. Age up's in queue, aging up there with the Chief's going to be the two War Hut politician there for Inca. 300 wood early on. Are we seeing any potential of going into um, native treaties and American allies, native embassy, Travois? But um, yeah, no no actual native treaties in the deck though, so maybe not the play. Just I guess just 300 wood is just like a pseudo um, villager card in Age 1. I can't remember if Inca getting three vills is actually coming to them in this new patch. That might be the case. So I might explain why Threnchia Wood is kind of the standard option here for Incans in transition. All right, enough coin here to get to the, the, fest the Queen's Festival tech. In comes it can be researched now. So the four vills will be coming in from the Catcher House. Uh, one villager herding down to the west. One villager herding to the east. Bandit Rider moving around. What has Snooper scouted in the middle map? He's seen Coyote Park. That's actually quite a scene's treasure. Our two bigger treasures in the middle of the map. Um, are El Polo Guapo's shield, 30% HP on Explorers. And three Bandit Riders for 320 XP. Noting that uh, Snooper has taken one of the Bandit Riders from his ex uh, Explorer's ability. Uh, train post here being thrown down by Passy. Looks like he's explores crossing the map to get it down. Does miss that pass of XP, but I don't think I don't think it was, I don't think it was possible for him to really get that. So, so he will get the next pass coming across. That'd be very very nice. Decent herding efforts coming in here from Passy. Herding from three multiple hunts at the same time instead of um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably you'd probably at this point be herding two, maybe one in some games. I'm not lazy in that sense, but uh, having three. Herds being pushed towards your town centre is certainly a, a very useful thing. Maybe this is just the Brit player of Passy shining through. Unfortunately, he's gathering this uh, cord of wood with a villager. I would highly recommend a settler wagon going to the cord, 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 because they just go through uh, these wood crates about 2.5 times faster than a villager does and um, picks these up in each these two batches of... Um, two batches of 50 instead of uh, five batches of 20. And yes, a house comes down... And for me, I'm already expecting Passy here to be going for an Eco FF because he's prioritising the coin gathering instead of military training. I don't see him going for stable here because it's really delayed. Like he's just having to go for the hustle. 
He's having to go for the house first so he can maintain villager production. And um, he might just go three bills, 700 wood, straight FF. Two forward war huts here from Snooper, right on top of the 320 XP. Very smart positioning. Uh, these these war huts, they can just honestly fire straight at the bandits. The siege from these uh, war huts isn't that strong. Um, and the quicker you can get this done, if the enemy explorer near, comes nearby, you can just turn the war huts onto it and you're not going to lose too much HP from you know, the explorer and the bandits sieging. Sleeper not attacking the Ulans here. He's got, he's got multipliers versus cavalry. At least trade off your HP. Walking away from cavalry with a spearman explorer is not what you want. Yeah, turns in. There you go. Swipe. Swipe. Just 18 attack. It's certainly not insignificant. Uh, tr maybe try and run to the, the spearman. But uh, yeah, 100 XP there for Passy. Passy looking very strong. And yes, it's, it looks like it's going to be a three. Set the wagon, 700 wood. Stable comes down defensively. But that has to be war wagon production in the third age. Uh, looking at his villager production here, looks like he's got um so like he's got steel trap eco already to be honest. I think he has. Yeah, steel trap's complete. Would like to see though a church with this on the 700 wood. It's church and a second train post if you can afford it, but I suppose with the um Incans and their spearmen and the siege, maybe this mid-map train post is too too uh, wishful thinking, but certainly a church in base there for that extra passive XP income will be very beneficial. Getting your tempo moving in the right direction in the third age and getting an age up here about six minutes fifty. I think six fifty is gonna be the time. Maybe six fifty five. Certainly close up close about that. It's gonna be a very impressive age up time here from Germany. And I think it's fair play, really. Um the catch of boom here from Inca is decent, but it's not I wouldn't be overly worried about it. You just look at his resources at the moment, it's just it feels like he's got nothing. The res per minute as well, it's only like 500, that's from, must be from a crate somewhere, where's that crate gone to? It's not the catcher houses on wood already, is it? Yeah, it's just died down, yeah, it's just gathered up all that um, wood crates, and now it's just, mostly it's just food, and spamming stuff like um, Bowman, Spearman, going for Chincha Bruin now, so it's not the uh, military road building tech with 10% speed just yet, no Crowry, with the poison damage, and uh, I don't think Passy's going to be too afraid when he clicks up too honest. Again, gathering the wood crates with villagers instead of settler wagons. Disagree with this one, especially you know, on a massive crate like 500. Um, the settler wagon is so efficient going through crates. Um, I know he's got vid I know he's got his settler wagons happily continuously gathering coin. I suppose that the villagers gathering the crates, they can hop into the town center very quickly to get some fire. But yeah, nice batch of Ulans here. Age up uh, coming in with Minutemen support. Was actually going to catch these guys out. Plume Spearman are going to move in position to try and fend the cavalry back, but uh, even though that's just a that's just a great exchange there for Passy, and you know, kind of preventing this age to attack, still maintaining his Ulan mass. This is important for Passy. He's got his Ulan mass protected. He's sending it his skirm, but he's got he's yeah. able to upgrade his to the veteran Ulan status. We he hasn't really lost anything behind this as a result. Certainly, has a lot of food income to be honest, especially with steel trap villagers. Don't really know what he wants to spend all his food on, considering a skirm's coin heavy, Ulan's is coin heavy. May want well to try and get like a war wagon in queue, possibly. But yeah, you can see he's focused on getting the uh, houses down. There's the vet Ulan's, and um, again, oh, well, looks like uh, Snoop has attacked the uh, Pandit Rise, possibly at the wrong time. Try his best to actually not lose the um, Explorer there, and yeah, manages to get that in the end. Skirms need to uh, prod away at the Plume Spearman. Bit of overkill there, but um, Passes kind of s can see how he wants to play it and what his plan is. Um, I find group of my explorer Skirms a bit risky. I, I really dislike it, especially when the explorer goes down. It makes control groups a bit behave really awkwardly as a result. But um, why he's alive, he's certainly tanked up a lot of damage. It's going very, very fine for him. More Skirms sending out nine Ulans behind this. These war wagons here, looks like they only just have their place of mines, no amalgamation, and certainly not having any silversmith play in the second edge. I think silversmith as a card certainly is valuable in this deck. I'd rather have silversmith instead of 700 food as the option. I mean, I wouldn't even imagine sending 700 food or silversmith in this game, especially with this build order, but it's just the options there. Maybe your opponent might think you might go for a bit of a, a three card semi as Germans into the, the third age. Ah, oh, Plume's beaming for forward, that's okay. Villains get pulled back, and 
Got to give credit to Passy's unit control of this game in this series so far. Looking to be on point. And Ola Mas hasn't really lost any. So, although he hasn't really trained any, he's only gone like Vet Ola and trained Skirms and sent 9 Ola. Three gets from the Skirm shipment as well. He's up to 20. This is a significant cavalry force and is forcing his villagers back. A few Chima runs coming up now. It's still, it feels close. It feels like Pass is still in the lead, but I feel that there should be just some more stuff on the map at just any one point now from German player. But I think we kind of soon going to get to that critical mass of uh, units. Another pop of four scums behind there. He's just got. He's just got to take. He's just got to go in with the um, Olans. You got to focus down. Obviously, the um, pipes. Here comes a big Chimu batch, and uh, I think Snoop is actually going to force the engagement out of. Uh, Passy here instead of trying Passy trying to work his way through the, the uh, spearman and yes the spearman and Chimps can engage right on the stars and this mixture of units together is actually very uh, tough to deal with Skirms in a great position here to work on the plume spearman absolutely fine but the Chimps are going to turn straight onto the Skirms now the Skirms are trapped and the plume spearman will just turn onto the Urlans behind this and uh, the Urlans have to take down the spearman first before saving the skirmishers I think he's just decided to just abandon them to the Chimus and try and protect his cavalry and get out of there Jaeger's now being called him from Passy and it certainly feels awkward calling Jaegers after 8 skirm and losing the skirm mass. <coughs> I'll pretend I'll pretend I did not see that one there. And we'll just we'll, we'll stay we'll still maintain the nice unit control there from Passu. <laughs> yeah, Dops Dops do well versus Inca. It's 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 just the kind of like the Coyote Runner, Puma Spearman, Chimu Runner. Plumed Spearman as a combination is so difficult to micro because they're both tiny units. They both have the same kind of tile space. It's very hard to actually kind of, you know, accurately micro that. Hassar's being called just to protect the setup wagons, but the setup wagon goes down to poison there. Poison going through the hate the rangers, but the high HP should do pretty well. Jaeger's nearly about to pop here. Passy needs to create some space so he can't have the Jaegers be popping out on top of the Spearman and Chimus. Thankfully, Snooper's backing out though, so this pop should be able to be pretty decent and he'll get him out. Snoop are going to take down the house. I think that's quite smart. He'll see the, the, the um, Jaegers and run for it. It's quite awkward though because this one thing these, these warhawks are doing pretty well is, is the position right in between the Cheyenne and the lake. It's just you don't have much surface area except from sieging from the front. So there's any units popping out from the uh, warhawk will go straight onto the Olans. And this is going to happen with some Chimuras. Just go straight on top of them, get a bit of a attack off. Um, actually, Super probably falling a little bit far, t a little too far off there to try and make good uh, use of that engagement here. Chimuras going in, coming back out. Uh, not really committing, but I think he just now with the infantry here, the um, bow is he just has to kind of go in because you can't just keep going in and out. So, yeah, the com commit was in the pike actually get a great engage onto the Olans. Olans just trying to cut through everything by sheer brute force. But I think it's enough plume spearmen here 20% many resist. Remember, 170 HP, these are high HP plume spearmen. Maybe Passy over uh, prices them, and another batch of Chima's coming out. It's going to do pretty well. Yes, there are Jaegers behind us, but once the Olans go down, then you're back to. Bit of an issue there of having the Jaegers have to run away. Another batch of five villains are going to work very well in this engagement, and uh, Snooper has to back off. You joke saying that make a priestess and convert those mer mercs, but I gotta say, a priestess um, from Snooper, it's a bit awkward because he's in the second age, it's not the third age stats, but uh, a priestess, they don't have the heavy infantry tag, so they kind of just. That unit is it's like a fat envoy. The priestess is a fat envoy. Envoy can just walk in between the Jaegers, shake their hands, offer them a lovely cup of tea, and not be too scared of the Jaegers. Obviously, they'll get cut down by Ulan still, but it's um nice tanking potential. And the thing with the priestess, of course, is is if you if you attack the priestesses, the rest of the Incan army kills you for free because you're not attacking the army and reducing the damage. But if you ignore the priestesses, well, you you, you get a couple of units converted, which is basically twice as worse because it, it doesn't it doesn't happen the, you know losing a unit to conversion is one thing but them gaining gain that unit against you is even worse so 
it's um i think priestess is, is a very strong unit not very well utilized not well explored i think a bit more potential big plume spearman pop onto the Ulans. Ulans trapped in between the two war huts and um yeah plumes again another plume spearman sandwich here from snoop onto passy passy again in between another you know, double layer pikes and um uh, the Chimus are engaged onto the Jaegers. I think this is actually a correct decision. He wants to basically eliminate the Jaegers, maybe trade them off for the Plume Spearmen. There's War Hut support here. Plume Spearmen working through the uh, cavalry. And yeah, all the Jaegers are gone down now. Yes, there are Ulans, but this is double War Hut with multipliers, with more Chimus and more um, scouts and parties on the way. Uh, it's still a close game, this is, because we have Poison Bowman behind, ripping through the Ulans with you know, poison damage on the War Huts. They still do massive damage. Big Chimu batch behind this, and then behind... Behind us now, Passy is starting to move out, and I still, still, oh no, where's that shipment gone? What is that shipment anyway? Is that, I don't know what it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's the, the spearmen forward. They've kind of blended in with the tumors. They all look, the, they all look the same, especially with this kind of yellow color on Great Plains. It's nice kind of camouflage there, but uh, um, Passy's got and the yeah, Snooper now getting another Ulan kill from the reinforcements from the War Huts, and may want to consider going for a third War Hut to be honest, because if he. If he loses this position, well, he's absolutely screwed. But as long as he's got this position to fall back on, I think he's going to be pretty much safe. Big raid here. Forcing all these uh, villagers back. No great coats here from Passy. He actually may lose th uh, two set of wagons. She should have lost two set of wagons if there was a bit more of a focused fire coming on, but I think Snooper just assumed cavalry villagers that some would eventually go down. But that was a zero villager loss raid, and yeah, Snooper would be a bit disappointed at that. Passy now knows that that's an area Snooper wants to target, so he may want to keep those war wagons and all ones nearby, but moving for a counter raid on the on the food in front. No actual food behind. The only food he has is on that top gold mine, so you can see all his um probably get to see all those units moving to the top side. Another big batch of experience going down over there to Passy. Is he sending anything? He's sending seven, seven skirmishers now, having already gone through nine Ulan, eight Ulan. Uh, doesn't need the wood here. He lost. He lost some units. He doesn't need the population space. So I imagine the next ship will be one thousand gold, which is actually a really good shipment. I think he may want to send that shipment now instead of seven skirms. It's kind of hard when you got no villagers near base to pick it up as well. So I can understand. Why seven scums feels more intuitive and natural at this position. Still in the steel trap, still on the place of mines, no amalgamation. Um, the only 5k gold mine on Great, Ma Great Plains is down to the kind of southeast of the map on the side where the trading posts spawn. And it's actually really far away from the German player's control. Nice. Erlan right behind. This has got the. Um, Minions of a big Vilray, but Snooper's on the board. He's hyper away. He's going to pull villagers back. Unfortunately, though, these are Vils behind Town Center are at risk of going down. But actually, here comes the Chimu Runner uh, catch and uh, Snooper here baiting his villagers in for the Chimu Runners. Passy did not take the bait. He's getting out of there, but uh, one Ulan gets a little bit tanked, tanked there by the Chimu. Chimu's here not been able to snare the Ulan. So the Ulan should be able to get out pretty um, easily there. Snooper's mass is just growing at the moment. 10 bowmen, 15 spearmen, 21 chimus. A lot of food available, so it could go from a large, large batch of uh, bowmen behind. And uh, the, the German army moves from one coin mine to another coin mine. Another big batch of uh, war wagons here. Does Snooper have his poison tech yet? He doesn't just yet. doesn't have his poison tech. doesn't really need to send the four fattened llama, especially with the kind of the chincha brewing. Uh, and the catcher house eco could have more villagers on wood and gold sources because he's not short on food so he's not, any extra food he has is not really being invested uh, could be looking to go to a third of war hut production for the time being Chimu's diving onto the war wagons. War wagons unable to really kite at the moment, but there's a couple of bowmen's left down to the southern side by the Vet Erlans. Erlans raid in base, but they're away from the fight at the moment, and Chimu's just going to run straight onto the skirmishers. They've seen where the skirms are standing. Bows are firing and moving forward. Uh, Spearman trying to chase down the Erlans, but actually it's the war wagons they really be th uh, thinking of for the time being. Big damage dealers working on the Chimu's, but the villagers now exposed to the poison damage from the bowmen, and reinforcements from um, Inca will be very strong. Villager raid at the back, two going down, another two will go down behind this. But more villagers in the middle here for Passy, likely be going down. Passy at 27 villagers with 
six settler wagons. And actually, look at this movement speed. These guys with their Incan road uh, building networks take 10 percent speed, 5.5 speed. Um, Pike, when you cannot kite with um, war wagons from that, but by the time the war wagon moves, turns, and fires, the spearman's already on top, and that that card is insane, isn't it? For the spearman, wow, 10% plume spearman actually works super, super well. It's like a fast, it's like a Rodolero basically in terms of speed, but certainly more damage dealing, more HP. The game ends there, Chimu's on the villagers, and yeah, Passy just kind of had the opportunity, and uh, Snooper outlasted and uh, hung on for dear life yeah the three unit combo is really hard to deal with if snooper stayed kind of bow pike for the entire game i think passy could have worked away worked around and got the kind of micro element there under but since the chimu's coming it's just an extra dimension which is really hard to deal with unless you have the doppel sodders behind Uh, M Singh, this is the uh, Trash Can League tournament for players around the rank of about 1,700 ELO. So certainly solid, solid players, not quite hitting that pro level, but uh, certainly uh, a lot of close competitive games in this series. And we're, you know, the score now after two games is one apiece, which is absolutely uh, great to see. Let's look at that post game because I, th I think from Pass's point of view. I said I've said it a few times so far, but I really, really do like the the XP you get from the church. I, I think it's certainly worth it. And if you can push your shipments in the third age ahead by this by let's say um, five seconds, this shipment by eight seconds, this shipment by ten seconds, you just have a bit more of a momentum pushing forward and having more stuff coming. Snooper here getting double shipments back to back from that three hundred and twenty XP treasure is certainly. Um, a noticeable pickup there. I think that's really helped his um, gain that uh, single treasure. Because if you get that treasure super early, yes, you do. You do have multiple shipments. Because you, you can only spend one shipment at a time. You can you slowly go through the progression. But that had a real big effect there on Snooper on his um, army. Uh, let's look at the all resources. Yeah, Snooper ahead. The thing is, the passive with the H two kind of eco there slowly gathering the seven hundred wood with the villagers, uh, to kind of increasing that eco by you know, deception. The eco from Inca just just remarkably takes off. I'm surprised how this uh, income is so so strong. A lot of this time passes obviously having to walk villagers around. Um, going three set of wagons, seven hundred wood. I do I do like the kind of build order of going something along the lines of three set of wagon, uh, two set of wagon. 700 wood while training batches of, of a uh, hus or batches of Uland. So, kind of going for like the kind of that idea of you know, um, the classic Uland semi, but with an extra two set of wagons there. You eco does and um, does get himself into a real strong position. So, instead of going to say fifth, like a uh, three batches of hus, maybe just go to uh, two batches, possibly one, one in the bit, just to try and force the kind of aisle force the pike response and then the age up behind, but um. Yeah, it just it just felt that in this game, the three set wagon seventy would just didn't actually create that much of a tempo and much of a window there for the German player to expose. It just always seemed that the Incan player had enough pikemen to defend from the cavalry. Junk bombers weren't taking a good enough trades versus um, the skirms and the Ulans. I think the poison damage there from the bowmen really helping them to help deal with the cavalry as well. And if we look at the um, timeline, the military population in particular. There's a fight underneath the war hut, which just didn't quite go uh, in favour of Passy as he wanted it. This early fight out in the open probably set, set the tone. And yeah, I just like uh, Chimu's got some sort of skirms, Pike's blocking onto the, the cav, and the thing with the Pike and Chimu's, they, they can just move through formations so easily. There's no real path finding issues with those units, but the Ulans just can't quite do that. They can't run through Pikes to protect the, the skirms, and that's probably the kind of the problem. Of the kind of skirm Ulan competition in this matchup. Cool. Let's move on to the third game. Right, let's do it.
<laughs> All right, we're on to Punjab here. A surprise pick here for Passy's map. I'm really surprised by this one. Um, he's gone for Ottomans as well. So Snooper won last game, has chosen to play as the Russian civilization on Punjab. Uh, Passy gets into counter pick here, go for the Ottomans. I'm very excited to see this, and I'm very ready to get the banter ready for Passy because I haven't seen him play Ottomans before. It'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, play style he's going for. It looks like he's going for an early house, early train post. I haven't seen Explorer stop for treasure, so it looks like Passy should get his very first batch of XP, and maybe Passy has been doing his homework. We'll see what decks he's got. He's got 1v1. Uh, so Silk Road, but he's, he's gathered with Silk Road, right? so it won't be that. He's got the build, which could be this, actually. He could be doing the build idea. Um, mix, no. Team, no. Oh, I think here is missing. No, that's, that's fine. It's fine. I, don't, I just don't, I don't expect him to uh, send in the um, Silk Road at all this game. Five builds is actually a nice little card that I'm going to have, but uh, never really find it much... Uh, game played, honestly. But he's gone for his 1v1 deck, so not looking to go for the build. But uh, early TP there. It doesn't quite give him his first shipment, but able to call in his shipment about 11, 25, 11, uh, 1 minute 30, shall I say. Not 11 minutes 30. <laughs> That'd be a long time for your first shipment, but instantly getting the three bills. 100 food coin down. And uh, imagine it's lying without losing more than 200 HP. I think the 200... HP mark for two lions and two tigers is a kind of good benchmark to kind of put yourself against. Uh, both players here scouting out to the 80 wood treasure here, which you see Jax being picked up. Only one water buffalo here for Passy. A bit of a shame here because, you know, Passy does have options with the Grove Rickshaw as well. And I think he's been, he's been aggressive with his uh, scouting, going for the mid map and going down the, the line to try and pick up the Yaks where. Snooper probably went defensive and probably went to the middle map and tracked back and was ahead of Passy. So it's probably why if we look at Snooper's base, he's currently got two water buffaloes. There's a third one out on the map somewhere. Neutral. Okay, Passy's got that one. So two apiece. He's eaten one. He's eaten... That's, that's, a, that's a near guy. Um, I think it's only been gathered there by two vills there, but it looks, looks like it's going to be a fast age up here from Passy. Yeah, already clicking up. Maybe one more. Water Buffalo is still just chilling out, already being deleted in the middle of the map. Um, Snooper himself also eaten a um, Water Buffalo, it seems. He's only got down to one to try and get that age one, um, age up a little bit faster time. Going for the five population treasure, which I'm, you know, I guess it has its place, it does work. I uh, certainly wouldn't be rushing to get that treasure. Pass you here, agent pretty fast. Looks like he's starting to. Well, no, he's got 200 wooden transition. He's been chopping. Is he going to go for a second training post? He hasn't even got a mosque yet. No, so he's. um. What, what's happened here is he's just got himself the 80 wood treasure. He didn't chop the extra 50 wood in the first age to get the mosque, which I think is worth uh, doing so. And on this livestock map, I think. Yeah, Pass had the right idea of eating some of that livestock, but I think. Yeah, going for the early mosque makes sense. He's got 200 wood left over. So maybe he's like thinking, oh, can I get that second train post? That'd be really, really good if I can. And might actually buy himself some time as well as a result. Snooper walks past Passy's explorer, probably not aware of what Passy wants to do. I'm going to go for the 80 coin treasure. So yeah, it looks like there's going to be a second train post coming out from Passy. The Governor Asia outpost wagon. Here comes some coin ships behind, and then sends in the coin behind for the, the classic Botto FF for the time being. Very simple, very easy build, very strong. But um, I have forgotten in recent times how this performs versus the Russians. And looks like Snooper going for basically eco play himself, not going aggressive. I think he's now seen the tower and realising what the play is. He hasn't seen any wood crates, so I mean, he's quite happy with what's going on. Uh, you probably pick up that uh, coin treasure nearby. Has he seen actually Passy working on this treasure? I think he does. He's just going to move in for the steal. And you know, at this point in the game, I don't think it, either explorer is really too uh, conscious of treasure stealing, especially a low tier like this. But uh, it's like Passy's really taking this one seriously, not letting this go at all, keeping that macaque alive all the way to the treasure there. And that uh, is a nice little play.
I just realised that on this recorded game, I don't have the, um, the the amount of resources remaining in these animals by default. So it might be the player settings. I might just not be on in in, in general. But I find that very strange. I um, oh, on Super's point of view, that makes sense. Yeah, you, you, having the resource bars above the animals is is actually such a really nice change. It's some some players don't like it, but it's just sometimes you can't actually click on these animals just in time to see whether it's going to go die, whether it's going to expire or not. And some players' intuition of when these animals expire is not necessarily where it is, and just sees, you used to see so many people just randomly herding villagers away because just they auto automatically tasking onto the next vill, just herds them so far. So that's been a nice little quality of life change. The agent's coming in here. Are we agent with the hussars? We are agent with the four hussars. 700 coins, 700 wood. Will we see a pivot shipment? He hasn't got the five villas here. I don't think he'll go five jans. So probably will be something along the lines of eight jans, two falcs, thousand coin, mameluke, jan combat, or maybe an early two, two falc jans. He should be building his barracks now. He's, he's going for, yeah, moss barracks. Really defensive barracks as well, to be fair. Um... I suppose he needs to keep it roughly near his outpost, which is in base, but I think he could have afforded... Well, you know, if, if, unless you see a blockhouse... If you don't see a blockhouse on the map, you just probably haven't scouted in time, so keeping this in base at the time is fine, but he's going to go... Oh, he's going to go 5 Jan. I I hope he cancels this. Maybe this is just, just checking in case a random 20 Cossacks turn up at the random time, but uh, yeah, just extra 3 more Jan stories compared to 5 is such a big difference, and I... You just look at his shipments. He hasn't got one for a long time coming in behind this. Second blockhouse here for Snooper. Five Jans produced. He's actually going to commit to this five Jan shipment, which I feel... Uh, he, the thing is, he's not going to push out now, is he? That's that's the weird thing. He, he kind of wants to wait for the Falks. So, by that token, it's just... What what was what was the? Oh, yeah, okay, he's going actually. Four hus going. We're slowly going to push forward. There's another five behind this, and he needs to have the wood available behind to go for uh, the veteran janissaries, and that should be his priority at the moment. So get the vet janissaries, high priority here. Couple of Rusketeers forwards just to try and push back these Assars, but just really wants to sit back underneath the blockhouse and let the blockhouse and town centre efficiently deal with these animals. Uh, not the best herd in here by a snooper. You can tell he's really been working hard to try and get these animals in by um, just continuously pushing them in, but the animal is wanting to wander to the northern position. Um, this blockhouse location possibly a bit curious, maybe um, here or ID. If, if, if there's no animals, that would be a fantastic position. I suppose having double outpost forwards when you got jam when, yeah, when you got falconets on the field is probably not ideal. Yeah, so Patsy is waiting for his two falconets. So now yeah, waiting means he probably could have and should have gone for the eight janissaries, but it's, it does leave him with the possibility of going eight janissaries as another shipment of Jans. But when you've got fifteen Jans anyway, soon be twenty. Well you'd be absolutely fine going Jan combat for twenty percent as well. Oh, has he has he pressed a button? Has he pressed the wrong button here? That's a very, that's a very slow push coming from Passy. I know, he, I like I like how he's trying to be like really like defensive, really cautious, taking this seriously. It's a tournament game, but um, yeah, he, he could be a little bit more um, forceful than this. He is Ottoman, remember? Okay, the Russian player into the next age here. Nice to see Falconet's defensive from Super coming out already. Going to be a Falk exchange. Snooper packing up his Falconets, but really wants to pray. Uh, yeah, I think he wants to push him into a bit more of a clearer space, into micro, but get them unpacked away from the action. And yes, Passy, he can't quite see them just yet. Uh, Snooper's obviously got vision on the Falconets, so that's going to help uh, cause a lot. Um, no veteran units in queue at all, so it's just veteran Jan's going to destroy anything. And a bit of path in here. Oh, a, a Musketeer taking that, and actually, um, if that's going to be it. 
a one for one trade. One of the Hussars gets onto the Musketeers, but behind this, the Vet Jans just crushing everything. Colonial Musketeers, Colonial Strelitz just not standing up to the Janissaries. The Falcons have gone down, so you can argue that the Falcons have done their job in trading. But Passy here with these just stupendously strong units just pushing through behind this. At this moment in time, the Giving Anxiety would say this is not an RCS game, and the Ottomans are the worst RCS Civ designed ever in the history of RCS. But uh, Passy just playing to his Civ strengths, forcing the issue, now retreating before he overstays his welcome, maybe looking to wait for something along the lines of uh, more Janissaries and uh, a Mamluk shipment, or 1,000 coin into Mamluks, which should be with him r soon enough. He does have more... He does have uh, more class shipments here, so he's yeah, going go for 1,000 coin. So if that's the case, he probably wants just to move all his villas on coin onto food, just to try and get uh, normal production. He's up to 90 population. Uh, like, if, after Passy, you're not playing as the British civilization. You know, extra population means nothing if you don't... You've got nothing to fill it. Still three villas chopping aimlessly. No market down just yet for Ottomans. Maybe just trying to get, like, a extra bit of... Um, a housing income there, possibly. Or an XP income from the housing. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious to see what, what the wood chopping here is for. If there's, if there's any ideas behind it. Out comes the, uh, all the 1k gold. Another batch of 5 jans. This is going to be about 1300 coin floatage behind this. And we'll need a bit more food. Could go second barracks soon behind this. I think second barracks is actually pretty decent. Um... Was coaching Wuji and kind of worked out well going for a second barracks production and timing it with the Mamluks. But um, it's just weird. The, the thing is with Passy, by going five Jans, he could have had, let's say, Jans say combat at this time as well. So it just feels like being down a ship in the Fortress Age is kind of really stunting his progress as the game goes on and actually having to back out, waiting for the Mamluks to allow the vet veteran Shredders and that Shredder mass to uh, remass itself as well. Oh, you just just get just kept chopping, did you? It's up to hundred population now. It's alright, boys. We're gonna train another forty janissaries from one building. We'll get there in the end. We'll get there in the end. <sighs> Maybe that's a bit of German macro hanging uh, hanging over into the Ottoman uh, game style. But the thing is, just Ottoman just don't have the spare eco to afford this luxury. Mamluks do come in. We'll take some time to uh, drop by. Frantically queued up his sick of Janissary. Another, as another house. <laughs> oh, has he even got the um, villager production text on the mosque? Like they could be. He's got the villager cap. I think he's just realised he's been capped. I, I don't know. I guess how long he's been capped for. Wasn't actually specifically looking, but one of he's got his corporal viziers, his military system, and another. <sighs> up to forty Jans. I. Oh, the thing, when the Mamluks come in, like a lot of people will be going, will be saying, "Go, go, go!" But honestly, Jan combat on forty Jans on forty-five Jans is, it's such a high priority. It's um, oh, it's gonna be so strong. Can you afford it though? Let's look at Snooper. What he's up to? A lot of units. He's also got veteran cavalry archers coming in. I think Snooper is aware of what's happening. I think every every player who's played Age of Empires three knows what the kind of the also build order is. Pushing your Jan Falk back off, wait for your Mamluk reinforcements. So he's trying to do his best with the Cav Archers. Cav Archers is probably a decent way of doing it, to be honest. They do have melee resist, but here comes the four Mamluks. Jan's getting his strats here, but a little bit too close, but the Mamluks, as soon as they get onto the Vent Strats, be fine. I was like, I'm hoping for a few more strats in this. The strat count from Super hasn't really increased since our last uh, check with Snoop at this moment in time. Mam's working on cavalry archers, focusing down the maps at one time. But the, the, the real play is just to forget the uh, Mam, Mamluks and engage the janitors. But the thing is, he's been engaged away from the blockhouse. There's only one blockhouse still, no more blockhouse reinforcements. And all the strats have basically gone down. Cav archers should be enough to kind of kite away and keep distance from. The Minutemen do get, get called out. Another shipment available for Snooper. Has really, really called 19 strats. He hasn't got he hasn't got any like military to like back this up. He's just. He's just has he's missing a card from the third age as well, and that's just brutal. Like this is the moment in time where you basically like, you panic and call in eleven musks or something along the lines to kind of 
help stabilize the first Mamluk has now just gone down second behind us will go down other two Mamluks at full HP behind us is a pretty brutal in the, and the Janissaries are still standing strong behind this and the uh, bottom one is just pushing in again so so strong um, straight at combat because well he's got no other units to train he needs a double stacking strelet production as well because he hasn't got that second block house because that was uh, taken down the first time meanwhile passy oh, he's going to spy he's here he's going to spy he's instead of jam combat and I, I'm, I'm liking that play that's going to force a lot of pressure on the villagers uh, and yeah he's just he's just going to give a little breather wait for him to come in and move time it with five spy he two mams there you go another strong cavalry unit i'm not too sure snoop is expecting this one but uh, has kept a, he's done very well keeping his cavalry archers alive though. I've got to say that from Snooper's point of view. Like he could have panicked and just like jammed everything in there and just hoped for the best. But he's kind of said, okay, you're right. I'm gonna let the building town center fire outpost work his way through. Um, I can trade off Janissaries, but you cannot have my cav archers. And I think that that is going to pay off very very well here. Passy pushing in with now seven heavy cavalry villagers sprinting to the northern side of the map. He knows that where there's. Heavy cavalry going, and if uh, Passy caps his wind or where those bills are gone, that could be disastrous. Uh, emergency wall coming down, don't think that will be built in time. Hop into the blockhouse. And yeah, now that the villagers have to move around here for snoopers, it's be a bit of a trouble just trying to get everything produced. He has 28 vet strats with uh, strat combat on behind this. But um, I imagine this Passy has more than 28 Janissaries. He has 33 and Strelitz has run right through the middle here. Bit of pathing. Where are the rest of the Strelitz? Are they all dead? He's only got 17. That's literally all his Strelitz on, on the map. That's um, a low number. And as soon as the Spies connect, that's going to be big damage to Jans. Jans should be focusing down the Cav Archers. Forget the Strelitz. That's what your Spy is doing. And that's what he does. He does move on to the Cav Archers here. A big snare from the Cavalry. And the, the Archers are going down very, very quickly, I think. Um, yeah, the 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 the, 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 bot, the Botto has claimed another worshipper as well, and um, yeah, some some decent Ottoman fast fortress play style from Passy, and yeah, sometimes you know if you don't even if you don't play Otto often, that's still a bit of a challenge. Execute that build order cleanly, crisply, and get some good unit control. This fight with Colonial Strelitz, Colonial Muskets, trying to sit on top of um, two Falconets. The Falconets would train each other off. And um, yeah, the four Husbert, twenty vet janissaries were just, just destroying the colonial Russian units. Just a huge difference in golf between quality of troop of veteran heavy janissaries, one of the strongest janissaries in the game, versus colonial weakened Russian infantry because they're Russian. Just big difference there in terms of strength. And that first fight really set the tone. Um, obviously, yeah, population is probably a bit of a poor graph to look at i'm sure count as well it's also pretty uh, bad in that sense you know like jan also only losing a couple of units here but snooper down uh, more than 20 yeah and that's probably what it was big batch there from the uh 19 stretch to try and kind of re-cement his position i think it's just trying to like hold on with the buildings sit behind the buildings and um yeah if you lose a block house to the falconets that's okay because what it also means is you have um you have, um, was it, wasted time and allowed your eco to kind of catch up. But, um, yeah, Russia's just... Russia's kind of awkward at the moment for the sake of it's... They say that Russia's buffed, but I, it still just doesn't, doesn't feel that Russia play very well in these situations. Um, the eco feels like it should be much higher. You know, all resources gathered. The difference between, um, you know, Otto and Russia here is marginal. At this like kind of fast age time and all the villagers Ottomans trained he hasn't paid for as well so it's just the relative eco for the Ottomans is so much stronger the military strength is so much better 1k coin closes the distance very very quickly and even in the end it's pretty close um, and the amount of villagers snoopers had it snoopers on um, 29 villas probably was up to a massive about 35 look at village account village population yeah he's lost uh, a good five there so let's say 38 starts off with 5, 33. Yeah, 33 villas he made. That's, um. Where's my calculator? It's nearby. There it is. It's th is it 260 two, two now for price of villager, I think? Um. No, it's 11 batches, isn't it? 
yeah, about 2.3, yeah, 2.8 thousand food, 2,860 food spent on villagers. And as a proportion of um, you know, resources gathered, 2,900 you know, is, you know, Snooper could be out basically saying he's at, instead of 14.8, he's at 12,000 flat. And Ottoman is up to fourteen point four. It's it's a it's a it's a huge it's a huge difference there. So um yeah, good game there. Well cemented. Passy gets in the two one victory over here over Snooper. And um yeah, and have a good series. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow the playlist, that's where you get to see all of the series, all of the rounds, all of the players and all the matchups you like in a single place. And I'll catch you guys later.